Hi guys, it's Siri, so welcome back to my channel. As you guys might know, I recently just read The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater for the very first time. This is one of the most beloved YA series here on booktube. Everybody and their mother has read this and loved this and I wanted to see what the hype was about this year. So I started the first book and was hooked basically from the get-go. However, my feelings over the course of this series changed a little bit. So in this video I wanted to both give you my thoughts and feelings on the individual books as well as on the series as a whole and whether or not I think it's worth to pick up and get into. First of all, what is this series even about? I feel like most people struggle really hard to describe it and I totally get why. It's kind of confusing and hard to explain. Basically, it follows a group of teenagers in the small town of Henrietta, Virginia that are on the search for a mystical Welsh king called Glendower who is rumored to have been buried alive somewhere around Henrietta on a ley line. And the myth goes that the person who finds and awakens Glendower is granted a favor. This group of friends consists of four boys and one girl. They're called Gansey, Adam, Noah, Ronan and the girl is called Blue. The four boys all go to the Aglian B Academy. It's a very posh prep school and Blue, who goes to a public school I think, um, has always viewed it with disdain and kind of has always warned herself to stay away from them. But events align at the beginning of the first book to bring them all together and the adventure starts from there. One little twist that I wanted to mention is that Blue is from a family of psychics. She's the only one in her family who was not blessed with any sort of psychic powers, but in exchange for that, she is able to enhance other people's psychic slash magical abilities. And there's one prediction that her family has consistently made about her since she was very young, and that is that she will kill her true love when she kisses him. For this very reason, she has sworn to herself she's going to stay away from boys just in general and from ugly and be boys in particular. And obviously, things don't quite go as planned. So based on that premise, you might assume this book is just a YA romance sort of hidden behind a vague mystical magical plot but actually the series is very light on the romance there's obviously some elements to it i mean they're teenagers hormones meeting a girl or meeting a boy for the first time it's like who this is this is different this is crazy but it's definitely not a focus there's no like angst necessarily not as much at least surrounding the romance in this and i think it's a pretty good example for a series that has elements aside from the romance that are strong enough to keep you interested and keep you reading and that aren't just a backdrop to make the romance possible if that makes any sense so i think that's definitely something that i appreciate a lot about this series um as somebody who's not the biggest fan of like romance plots vaguely disguised as a fantasy story or something of the kind. I actually would say this book is more magical realism than fantasy or paranormal. I don't know. It's hard to explain, okay? It's hard to put in a box. So first, let's talk about this series' strongest point, which is definitely the characters. They're all very unique. They're all very individualistic and the together have this really, really great dynamic going that's gonna want to keep you reading about their adventures together. I love how their relationships with one another, I don't mean romantic relationships, but just their relationships to one another are so complex and so three-dimensional and show a lot of different sides of all the different characters. And it's kind of making it seem quite effortless, this character exposition. And I just really, really enjoyed this, especially in the first book. I think that they did a wonderful job of setting up the characters, setting up the friendship group and their dynamic with one another. And I definitely think that this is the strongest point of the book and the thing that's gonna make you fall in love with the series in the beginning. Retrospectively, I can see that um, the books are all kind of focused on one specific character. So the first book is very blue centric. The second book is focusing on Ronan. The third book is focusing on Adam. And the fourth book is focusing on Gansey. So aside from Noah, pretty much everyone gets kind of their own book 
dedicated to them, which really just means that their perspective is the one we read from the most, their personal issues we deal with the most, there's just more of a general focus, while the other characters kind of retreat to the background a little bit. This never really bothered me, especially in the first book. I really liked kind of Blue's perspective and in the Raven King, Gansey's perspective were definitely my favorites. I also think that this balance between the new main character and the rest of the cast was kind of struck the best in those two. Whereas, for example, the Dream Thieves, I believe, didn't manage to do this quite as much. The focus on Ronan was not as compelling to me personally, maybe just because I'm not the biggest fan of him as a person. Also in the Dream Thieves, there's another character introduced um, that gets a lot of time devoted to him. So I felt like with the big focus on Ronan and then the other focus on this new character, the rest of the cast kind of um, was forgotten a little bit. And while I do like the characters as individuals as well, I think where they really shine and where they really make you fall in love with the book is when they work as a group and have their dynamic be more on show. So I felt like that was a little bit of a misstep and, and there should have been more focus on the group as a whole. As for the plot of these books, I think it has to be said that these are definitely very character driven rather than plot driven books. The overarching plot of the search for Glendower is definitely the biggest part of it. And then obviously most of the individual books have like short term goals within this long term goal, except again for the Dream Thieves, which to me just seemed to be meandering around and didn't seem to be going in any particular direction, which again detracted from my enjoyment of that book itself. I think in general, if you're looking for books with a compelling plot and a plot that's going to keep you reading and that's exciting and thrilling, then this is not the series for you. I do have to say that. I think for people that enjoy and need good plots, this isn't going to really work. There oftentimes isn't a distinct red thread that's being followed. The character's motivations are oftentimes a little bit murky and don't really have a distinct focus to them which can be annoying because it just seems like they're rambling and flailing and they don't really have a clear direction in which to work towards or like to move into and that's frustrating especially in a book that has like 400 pages and you feel like 200 of them nothing happens. Also I will say given that the series is four books long and the overarching goal of looking for Glendower is hyped up so much in the first three books or even the like in 90% of the series when they find him at the end of book four that it is the most anticlimactic thing ever it is dealt with in a couple of pages it is super unspectacular and it doesn't really do what you want it to do. It doesn't pack the punches that had been kind of promised throughout the series. And alongside that, there's a lot of individual like side plot strands that are just completely ignored at that point. The climax of the Glendower plot is simultaneously the end essentially of the series. And there's a little bit of descending action after that, but it is kind of just fan service time where you just get to spend like the last few minutes with the characters rather than wrapping up all the other things that have been started or haven't yet come to fruition in book four and I, that just to me felt like very rushed very lazy very annoying as well because i was in slightly at least invested in all these different things and i wanted to know how they would be resolved and they just weren't after the climax none of that matters anymore somehow and it's kind of annoying just in general i will say that to me four books is too long for this kind of a series that is so character focused especially since as i said in pretty much every book except maybe the first book i felt like there were parts that just seemed like flailing like just filling pages unnecessarily just to have more pages that never contributed anything to long-term goal, that didn't add anything to the story overall or even to the characters in their development. So in total, there were just enough superfluous moments that I feel like this could have easily been condensed down to a trilogy. I would even say cut out the dream thieves, take Ronan's arc, 
make it a small side plot in book three, which would then be book two, and leave it at that. I definitely feel like this series would have benefited from more rigorous editing in that regard and it definitely dragged on at parts and especially since I read this series in like the span of one and a half months or so, by the end I just did not care anymore really. I just wanted it to be over. <laughs> I wanted to have my conclusion and get out of it <laughs> and that is not necessarily the emotion I enjoy ending series on. So as for the books individually, I rated the first book four stars, the second book two stars, the third book four stars, and the fourth book three stars. So we have four, two, four, three. So while I would overall say that I enjoyed the series, it's definitely not one of these where I would say that I could reread it a million times or even one time. The characters were compelling, but not compelling enough to make me want to go back for them exclusively and everything else, like the plot, it's just not really worth it to me. What I will say though is that this series is very atmospheric. The writing style, I really enjoyed. Magus Devouter definitely has a very specific and unique way with words that I personally really enjoyed, at least for the most part, when it didn't feel like she was just filling pages with her words that didn't really serve a purpose. Overall, I would say this is definitely a very aesthetically pleasing series in terms of the writing style. And if you're somebody who really appreciates that alongside the interesting, complex 3D characters, I still say give it a go, check it out. Just don't go into it expecting like this mind-blowing story that's super thrilling and has twists and turns. The story itself could probably be handled in like a single book, to be perfectly honest. I would say don't buy the entire thing at once. Get the first book, read it, see what you think of it, if it's your thing, and then delve deeper into this. I feel like with this it's kind of like a 50-50 chance if you're gonna enjoy it or not and it's just not really worth the risk I think in like buying the whole series. And that is I think where I'm gonna end this review. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have read The Raven Cycle, let me know in the comments how you felt about it, if you think it's worth the hype. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you're enjoying my content. I upload every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, and I hope to see you very soon with another video. Until then, have a lovely week. Bye!